At the end of the worst week for the Trump presidency, Donald Trump has a new White House chief of staff, which is the absolute proof that even he knows that it was the worst week for the Trump presidency. Firing a White House chief of staff and bringing in a new one is always the act of a presidency desperately out of control. Reince Priebus was fired faster than any previously fired White House chief of staff in history. He lasted 189 days. Reince Priebus's last week on the job began with his failure to prevent the president from attacking his own attorney general. The White House chief of staff is supposed to control that. The White House chief of staff, Reince Priebus, also failed to organize a Trump administration announcement that transgender people would be banned from service in the military. The reason Reince Priebus failed to organize that administration announcement was because it was not an administration announcement. It was simply a tweet by an out-of-control president that the White House chief of staff is supposed to control. White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus failed to control the text of a speech that the president delivered to the Boy Scouts of America. It is the only presidential speech in history that the Boy Scouts of America had to officially apologize for. The Boy Scouts of America had to apologize for subjecting the Boy Scouts to a speech by the president of the United States. The president who the White House Chief of Staff is supposed to control. The White House Chief of Staff failed to control Anthony Scaramucci, who has been offered the job of director of communications in the White House and waged a public profane war with presidential advisor Steve Bannon and White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus, promising publicly that Reince Priebus would soon be fired. Every single thing that happened to the Trump White House this week was negative, and every one of those things should have been controllable by the White House Chief of Staff. Then. Then came the humiliating defeat of the Trump-McConnell repeal of Obamacare in the Senate last night, something the president had said he could do in a day, something the president said would be easy. It was the president's first major piece of legislation, and no one can remember the last time a president's first major piece of legislation was defeated by the Congress. And so at the end of a week of humiliation and chaos, in the White House, the president had had enough and decided the solution was to bring in former General John Kelly, now the Secretary of Homeland Security. But what everyone in Washington knows is that if General Kelly had been the White House Chief of Staff every day this week, all those same things would have happened. And it would still be the worst week in the history of the Trump presidency. And the best, most decisive victory for the resistance against the Trump presidency. The resistance crushed the Trump presidency on the Senate floor. The Congress now knows that they are not working with a functional presidency. Donald Trump was irrelevant to what happened on the Senate floor. He had no capacity to influence the outcome. He tried to get Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski to vote his way, but everyone knows Lisa Murkowski now is much, much tougher than Donald Trump. In a Wall Street Journal op-ed piece today, former Reagan White House speechwriter Peggy Noonan said Trump is, quote, weak and sniveling. She wrote, half the president's tweets show utter weakness. They are plaintiff, shrill little cries, usually just after dawn. The historian Joshua Zeitz this week described the White House this way, it's a team of rivals but for morons. General Kelly has never tried to manage a team of morons before. In the Washington Post today, Eugene Robinson captured the essence of the Trump presidency that General Kelly will now be asked to manage. Gene wrote, the court of Mad King Donald is not a presidency, it is an affliction, one that saps the life out of our democratic institutions and it must be fiercely resisted if the nation, as we know it, is to survive. Joining us now, Peter Weiner, senior fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center. He worked in the last three Republican administrations and was a senior aide to President George W. Bush. Also with us, Eugene Robinson, Pulitzer Prize winning opinion writer for The Washington Post and an MSNBC political analyst. And joining us, Chris Whipple, the author of The Gatekeepers, How the White House Chiefs of Staff Define Every Presidency. Uh, Eugene, the presidency you described today uh, so fully and eloquently in The Washington Post seems to be one that no White House Chief of Staff can control. 
Well, not without the authority to control it. That's what Reince Priebus always lacked. He was never given uh, anywhere near the authority that a chief of staff usually has. Um, you know, there was the, there was no organization chart. Uh, every, everybody just sort of reported directly to the to the president. He was he couldn't be a gatekeeper. He couldn't uh, he, he couldn't manage anything. And uh, you know, so whether or not he he was talented in managing or knew politics or whatever. Whatever, really didn't matter. And so the, the question going forward is, is whether General Kelly gets any more authority, actual real authority, not to reorganize the White House, but to organize it since it's never been organized, uh, and to, to control the flow of information and c control the people into the Oval, Oval Office and, and, and act like a chief of staff. And, and, you know, my bets are that he probably won't get it, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, uh, Peter Renner. Um... Am I being premature and, and betting everything I have that he won't get that authority in the White House? No, I'd, I'd lay that bet as, uh, <laughs> as well. Uh, look, we've seen Donald Trump enough to know that he's fundamentally uncontrollable and uncontainable. And it doesn't matter if James Baker was, uh, was chief of staff. Um, the personnel at the White House is mediocre. There's no question about that. But the problem at its core uh, is Donald Trump. And it is at its core that he is a person who thrives on chaos and manages with chaos, but it's really deeper uh, than that, Lawrence. It is a psychological and emotional affliction. He has a disoriented uh, and disordered mind, uh, and there is no uh, controlling or containing that. And what I also emphasize is we're 185 days into this White House, and this chaos is unlike anything that we've ever seen, and they haven't faced a genuine crisis yet. Mm. Can you imagine if you had a 9-11 type situation or a financial meltdown uh, or, or a, a, a war, a, a military um, collision happen with, uh, with this crew and with this commander in chief? That's the really um, frightening prospect. This is not going to change. Uh, it's his worst week, but it's not going to be the worst week of the Trump presidency. There's no bottom with these guys. Chris Whipple, you have written uh, a book about <clears throat> White House Chiefs of Staff. Uh, the, the, the job has grown over time. It used to be called appointments secretary. It was Richard Nixon, correct me if I'm wrong, in my memory, who decided to militarize the title to chief of staff and thereby create this image around the job itself. And yet, the, the job has become the image in so many ways with so many people who've had it. Uh, th this White House, it seems to me, is going to require a new chapter in your book because your book is how the chiefs of staff define every presidency. Is it possible for any chief of staff to define this presidency in the way you've said others have? Well, you know, as you as you pointed out, it really began with Nixon and Haldeman, and Haldeman yeah. became famously the Lord High Executioner. Yeah. Um, and th that's what you, I mean. Every president finds out sometimes the hard way that you. You cannot govern without empowering a White House chief of staff as first among equals to execute your agenda and most importantly to tell you things you do not want to hear. Now that's that's the big challenge obviously with with Donald Trump. You know with Kelly I think Trump has a shot at, at a reset here. I mean but it may be it may be a long shot. Generals have not done well. Mm -hmm. uh, Al Haig lasted a little bit more than a month with Jerry Ford after <clears throat> Nixon resigned. Uh, you can't just order people around or strap them up to lie detector tests to, mm -hmm. to try to ferret out leakers. I mean, it's a, it's a skill set that requires diplomacy, and there aren't a lot of Jim Bakers or Leon Panettas around. Uh, Gene, Gene Robinson, one reason why a general would struggle in this job is, number one, they are accustomed to having people uh, have to obey them. Uh, what they say, when they mm -hmm. speak, what they're, what they're giving are orders that must be obeyed in the chain of command. So that's their, their behavioral history going into it. The other is that the generals usually know a, what you could really classify within White House terms as nothing about politics. Uh, General <laughs> Kelly knows absolutely nothing about the contents or the politics of health care legislation, about the tax legislation that's going to be coming up, about the budget legislation. He knows nothing about it. And managing the politics within the White House has been a White House chief of staff primary function. 
Yeah, well, you're not getting that with with Kelly. I mean, you're, you know, the, look, most of the of the generals of that rank that I've met are, are sophisticated people, uh, and and they're not strangers, at least to the to the Hill in, in terms of national security matters, at least. Uh, so he he's got that. Of course, um, you know, the, the, there's no shortage of of generals in this administration who are experts on national security. The problem is uh, th there's nobody um, who. Can, who can control the administration's approach toward domestic policy. Uh, and certainly, uh, General Kelly would not be expected to, to step into that role, at least not, uh, not easily. I mean, it would be a steep learning curve. Uh, but, the, but do we even get there? I mean, does, does, is he even empowered uh, to, to do anything or to try to do anything without the president undercutting him with an early morning tweet? Uh, and, and that's what I just can't see, Pat. In the uh, White House that is being driven mad, apparently, by leaks, uh, it, it, it has flawlessly leaked tonight uh, to the Washington Post uh, <laughs> this about the history of, of this job offer. Trump first tried to offer the chief of staff job to Kelly in mid-May. Kelly told the president that he was flattered but declined, saying he still had more to accomplish, beefing up national security and improving immigration enforcement. The president has tried to convince the general multiple times, and the general has politely declined several times, said one administration, administration official who requested anonymity because he was leaking, uh, Peter, Peter Winter. Um, so, so there it begins. Uh, he's been asking for months, and for some strange reason, uh, General Kelly got the answer right repeatedly, and this week got the answer wrong. Yeah, I think General Kelly's going to look back and wish he had uh, said no, uh, no again. Uh, I feel for him. He, he's an honorable man. He's obviously a courageous man, and I think he's he's a competent man. But again, this he's in a situation that is um, that is impossible. And one of the things that we have seen about Donald Trump is that he ends up humiliating and diminishing mm -hmm. everybody around him. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, anybody within his orbit uh, leaves that orbit uh, a reduced uh, human being. And I'm afraid it's going to happen to General Kelly, um, too. Uh, and by the way, I, I do think that Republicans, there is a kind of resignation now within the Republican Party. They've been in this delusional world thinking that at some point they, they would be able to keep uh, Donald Trump on track. Uh, and I think that they finally figured out long, um, much after they should have, that that is an impossible task. And General Kelly, no matter how impressive he is, isn't going to be able to do what's impossible. Uh, Chris Whipple, in your study of the, the history of this job, uh, it, it has only grown increasingly complex over time because governing has grown in increasingly complex and the range of subjects that the White House Chief of Staff has to be fluent in have just <clears throat> exploded uh, exponentially. Uh, uh, the, prob the person who probably had the widest command of all of that, in my experience, uh, was Leon Panetta because he was uh, on the Budget Committee in the House of Representatives, which has jurisdiction over, in its way, almost everything. He had worked in the Office of Management and Budget of the entire federal budget. So he had to look into every single thing the government was doing before he walked into that White House. Um, and, and he was himself a politician, elected to office in the, in the Congress. He had everything you need. Uh, is that kind of, just as a bio, is that what you're looking for and everything yeah. off of that as a compromise? And, and even more so, you're looking for somebody who is grounded like Panetta or Baker, who can walk into the Oval Office, close the door, and tell the president what he doesn't want to hear. Mm -hmm. That's critical. The other thing Panetta had was Haldeman-like authority. Mm -hmm. He had the power. And one of the things, I mean, th this cannot work if unless the chief of staff has uh, authority as first among equals. He has to be the gatekeeper. Uh, there's no way that... Um, that that the moocher can yes. report directly to Donald Trump, or this will be this will fail. This well, will be look, I, I mean, uh, Gene, I think we have a mm -hmm. test for General Kelly on day one, and that is mm -hmm. exactly how many minutes does it take him to yank those White House credentials off the neck of Anthony <laughs> Scaramucci? Because if Scaramucci right. works in that White House, by definition, General Kelly has failed to control that White House.
Well, I, I actually believe that's true. I mean, I, I, it certainly can't report directly to the president if, if Scaramucci is around. He's going to, uh, he's going to push it. He's going to take liberties. And even if, if on an organization chart, he's, you know, he's below uh, General Kelly, he's going to try to get around him. He's going to have to be slapped down. And Trump is going to have to back Kelly up in those instances. And uh, who knows if he will? I kind of think he probably won't. But there's even an even bigger problem named Jared. Kushner, who is also in the White House, who is the president's son-in-law, who has this impossibly uh, broad portfolio of domestic and foreign policy issues, and oh yes, and peace in the Middle East, and everything else that he's supposed to be doing. Uh, and, and so, it, will he now report through General Kelly to uh, President Trump? Uh, he should. I doubt he will. Uh, Peter Weiner, is there is there another White House chief of staff in history that you're aware of who would have tolerated an Anthony Scaramucci in the White House for a day? Boy, you know, I thought that as well. I worked in the White House for seven years, uh, three administrations. If anybody had done what Scaramucci did, they, they would have been fired within an hour. And it's not only that he wasn't fired, it's that he was vindicated, that he got the trophy on the wall. Priebus is out, Scaramucci is, is there. Uh, and that kind of style, that kind of approach has been uh, validated. And it's been validated by Donald Trump, which gets us back to the original point. This, this is what is fundamentally the, the, the core problem with the Trump White House is Donald Trump himself. And uh, boy, if, uh, if Scaramucci had done this in any other uh, White House, uh, he would have been out on the curb in no time. Can I add, can I add one other yes. non-negotiable demand mm -hmm. that Kelly should make? And that is, Mr. he can say, Mr. President, you may tweet all you like, but I'm going to check them out in advance. Yes. He should have control Tweet of Tweet approval. Twitter. Tweet approval well, absolutely. should be a non-negotiable. Well, every White House chief of staff has had a final say in any White House communication that's going out uh, historically. Yeah. It's not unusual. Chris Whipple, who has to add a chapter to his book, The Gatekeepers, <laughs> How the White House Chiefs of Staff Define Every Presidency Except One. You're going to have to do a little adjustment on the title. Uh, thank you for joining us. Eugene Robinson, a brilliant column today. Thank you very much for joining Thanks us. Thanks so I really much. appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.